What's happening guys? Welcome back to another video and today we are on the iconic River Trent or sort of because it's been a very short amount of time here just a couple of little spots and then we're gonna head on to the Nottingham Trent Canal. Now target species are perch and zander. Zander being less likely than perch but we'll take whatever we can get. Uh, I'm going to start off with an FFS K2 in knife blade or knife edge I think uh, with a five gram uh, OMTD, it's just sw they're swimming hooks or swimming jigs. Um, I've just swapped the hook out for a Gerza, whatever it is that Tom recommends with these, I forget what they are, uh, just to suit the bait a bit better. The one that comes with the OMTD, the gape's not enough. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're gonna start off with. We're gonna bounce around in the slacks just off the main river here, um, sort of to the entrance of the canal basically, uh, and just see what we can locate. If we've nothing there, we're gonna head on to the canal itself and we're probably gonna switch on to casting small shads just to cover some ground and actually try and find some fish. Uh, we haven't got that long. I'm not here for fishing, I'm here for a totally separate, separate reason. So this is just a short interval. Let's see what we can do. Okay, well, it seems that GoPro once again did GoPro things and I've got no audio for this entire video. So uh, I'm gonna try and do my best to do a little voiceover. Uh, I'm fishing the mouth of the canal here and I've had a few casts across and kept getting caught in weed. So I decided to chuck right up into the mouth of it where it's a little bit deeper actually and there's a bit of water flow. Uh, I thought there might be a few fish hanging around. Uh, and I'm just waiting for it to hit the bottom and just every now and again, a couple of twitches and bang, there's the first fish. Um, I'm going to reel this in and swing it to hand. It's not a big fish but it's good because it's the first one and it means I can start putting together a little piece of the puzzle. So as you can see, lovely chunky little perch took the K2. Now what I do here is I assume that there's more than one. Uh, and I always do that when I'm perch fishing. So I have a quick little look, the hook will come out, and what I'll do, uh, I'll get my net set up and I'll store the, I'll, you know, retain this fish in the net, um, rather than chucking it straight back in and potentially spooking uh, a larger shoal and perhaps some bigger fish. Uh, I'll give it a little rest in the net and just see if I can pick a few more off before I do a little photo and a video and chuck it back. Okay, so this is the very next cast after that fish. Um, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing, chuck it up into the flow. Uh, I'm starting to put together a pattern. That's what you're looking for when you're fishing patterns. And I think those fish are sitting in the flow, uh, waiting for things to wash through. And as you can see, a couple of little twitches bumping on the bottom. Just moving it around in the flow, not really put, doing much of it, just letting the water take it around. And there you go, there's fish number two. Uh, and you know, would I have caught that fish if I'd have returned the other fish straight away? Who knows? But it goes to show there's usually a reason for everything you're fishing, and those fish wanted to be there. There wasn't anywhere else but exactly there. So I'm going to do the same again, unhook, straighten the net, and back in. Okay, well, it has been a bit of a struggle. Um, I haven't really had any bites. I had one good bite, um, but that's it. And then all of a sudden, these two turned up. Um, both of them caught on a uh, K2 from FFS in Knife Edge, I think the colour is. Um, and it was weird, I had these two and another bite in three casts and then absolutely nothing. Uh, about another dozen more casts and not even a sniff. So uh, I think I'll just show you, you these. Obviously, they're nothing to write home about, but um, when you haven't been fishing much like I haven't recently, it's quite nice to get out and have a little dabble and get a few bites, uh, especially on a new venue. So these are actually my first ever Trent perch. So not quite the monsters the venue's known for, but I'll take it at the start. Okay, so before I sort of crack on with fishing the canal, I figured I should sort of explain why I've chosen this, these two very different methods um, and my sort of thinking and feeling behind it. So whenever I'm lure fishing, I like to give myself two options. And generally those options, although they can actually vary what they are, will be of two types. They'll be a quick method and they'll be a slow method. Um, the slow method in this case would be this OMTD swimming jig with the K2 um, and slow meaning I'm bumping along the bottom and giving pauses between, giving fish a chance to actually pick up on it. Um, you're sort of trying to hone in on areas where you really think they're going to be, you know, these little slacks on the river, um, somewhere where you're pretty sure the fish are going to be, you just need to hold something there long enough just to get that bite. Um, so that's why I choose something like that. And then when it comes to quick method, it's always good, well, 90% of the time, this is gonna be my go-to, it's my favorite way of fishing, and that's with shads on a jig head, um, and it's no secret that that particular bait, the Kitek Swing Impact Fat, is my favorite, uh, and there's good reason for it, especially when fishing for canals. 
Uh, when I'm fishing canals, I like to fish a shad two different ways. So either on a straight retrieve, where I will cast, or pr pretty much always, because they're generally shallow, I'll let it hit the bottom, I'll keep rod tip up, and I'll just wind real slowly, you know, just enough that every now and again you might feel a little bit at the bottom. That's where those fish from me, I tend to pick up, so especially the Xander, um, and that's how I'll fish that. The other way I'll do it is I will fish it on a, uh, like a, like a, a sink and draw, that's probably the best way to describe it. So I'll cast it again, I'll let it hit the bottom, and I'll just give it one turn on the reel handle, let it rise up, and then let it fall back down. Uh, and just repeat, just do that all the way back in. Bearing in mind, the closer you get back in, the more effect you're gonna have on that lure. So I tend to start at the end of the cast, my rod tip up, and as I'm getting closer, I'll lower the rod tip, lower the rod tip, lower the rod tip, until it's under my feet, uh, and I'm pretty much straight up and down on it. Um, so that pretty much covers how I'm gonna do, how I do most of my canal fishing. There are obviously times where I'll change these methods, as in I might be on a crankbait instead of a, a, a jig and a shad, or I might be on a drop shot instead of a something like this, a weedless presentation like a Texas rig or a, or a Cheb uh, or whatever. So they will vary, but I think it's always worth having a slow and fast with you. That way you can cover pretty much any scenario. Okay, well, we never had any more in the main river itself, so I decided to move up into the canal. Uh, as you can see, I just had a bite there, which I missed. What I'm doing is I'm not fishing probably 85% of the canal. I'm bouncing my way down, looking where I think fish will be. Uh, it was quite a bright this day. Um, it doesn't really show very well in the video. So I'm looking for where I think fish might be holding up to get out of the bright, bright sunshine. So under bridges, anywhere there's cover, uh, and I'm casting very small shad, just slow rolling them along the bottom. Just trying to bump into some fish and i've had a few bites under this bridge almost straight away you see another one just then uh, if you watch my rod tip which is why i use the salvado that is not a fish that's a snag so i'm going to rather than try and pull for a break i'm going to get ahead of it because obviously i've reeled into that snag it's something people should do uh, and i'm going to pop it off the back of where it went in there you go and it's straight out i'm going to flick it back up the canal there's a boat coming and i'd sort of seen it and thought oh, i'll have one one last cast just before the boat catches up with me same again, let the lure hit the bottom and just really slowly retrieve, just keeping in contact with the bottom uh, and waiting for that telltale whack, which happens about there. Now that instantly, I knew it was a Xander. There's such a different bite to perch. Uh, and now I'm in a race to try and get this fish out of underneath the bridge and in the net before the boat gets there, because I'm sure 90% of the boaters wouldn't give it a hoot if they went through my line. It's only a small Xander, but I was very pleased and in the net it goes. Now, unfortunately, because GoPro does GoPro things, you won't have heard this, but the guys coming through on the boat were actually very friendly. Um, and they sort of, well, they didn't stop, but they had a little chat with me as they passed. Uh, and they're just coming up now, and you won't hear it, but the guy at the back said, uh, you know, we've been, we've been here for four years. That's the first fish we've ever seen anyone catch. We thought there was nothing in there. Um, and I said, well, you've never had someone the calibre of me here before, have you? So that's one of the fish in the net. I'll say it along those lines. Well, there you go. Again, not a monster. That is, even though we are nearly in October, my first Xander of 2023, and it absolutely slammed that Kitek swinging patch fat. Um, 2.8 inch, I forget what the color is, it's the orange red one. Absolutely whacked it. Um, I was racing the boat to try and land it before they run it over, but yeah, that was as surprised as I am. So we'll get it back and uh, see if we can get a couple more. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna continue walking down. I was concentrating on these bushes on the far bank, just thinking they might hold a few fish uh, as cover. But something quite interesting here, um, you might have to go back and watch just before I caught that Xander. If you notice the water was really colored, um, as if a boat had just been through, which you had. And I noticed that as well. And very often when boats come through, they cloud up the water. And I think it gives fish a little bit of confidence to feed. So I'd noticed that, and as soon as this boat got past, I cast straight into all the muddy water that it had left behind it, 
and bang, had a fish. Um, it's no different to any other cover. It gives them confidence to get out and get moving. Same as the bridges, same as any over overhanging bushes or anything like that. It, I'd had quite a few casts there with no fish. As soon as the, the boat came through and stirred up that silt and just gave those fish a little bit of colour and a little bit of cover, it moved out and uh, had a gut shed. Just a little perch, but um, it goes to prove a theory. And like I said, patterns are very important. Um, and there we go. Nine out of ten for the dive. And that's the session done. Uh, like I said, wasn't long, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, I think I topped up with three perch and the one Xander losing something as well and quite a few more bites and bumps and things like that. And I only lost one rig, so that was good going. Uh, and that's sort of what ended the session. Um, yeah, enjoy myself. I really like these sort of like smash and grab, stopping into somewhere I don't know, just seeing what I can get out of it. No real sort of expectations or sort of targets, just fishing for fishing's sake. Uh, so if you like these sort of videos, uh, I can maybe make them a bit more educational, show you a bit about how I'm fishing. Generally, if you, if you watch my videos in the past, I just go fishing and film the session. But if you want to see some more sort of how-tos and things like that, I'm happy to do them. Just need to hear from you guys, let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. See you next one.